What is up guys, this is Max Square back with another video. Today we are taking a look at how you can make a simple text bubble animation inside of After Effects. We're not gonna be using any plugins, just what you have with the default app. So this animation really isn't that complicated to make, but it can be applied to tons of different projects in my opinion, and it can really help you just smooth out your animations. But just before we get into it, I wanna let you guys know that my Mac Basics course is on sale for the whole month of December. So if you head over to learnmacbasics.com, you can get 25% off on that course for the next couple of weeks. Now I know most of you watching this video do not need a course on Mac Basics, but this could be an awesome gift for your parents, uncles, aunts, grandparents, whoever is struggling to learn their Mac. This course can definitely help them, but it can also help you so that you don't have to keep helping them every time they have a problem. That being said, let's jump into this tutorial. Now the first thing we want to do, of course, is open up After Effects, but we're also going to open up Illustrator to make that text bubble shape. Now you don't have to have Illustrator, you could do this in Photoshop or Sketch or Pixelmator, or if you don't have any of those apps, you can download the project file and just use the image included there. But what we're going to do is just grab a rounded rectangle and just make a simple rectangle here and center that. Then we're just gonna change that color to the nice iMessage blue. Next, we're gonna add that little tail that every iMessage bubble has, and we're gonna do that by grabbing our ellipsis tool, and we're just gonna create an oval somewhat like this. And just to help us clean things up, we're gonna change this to another color. Then we're gonna grab a rectangle, and we're gonna create a square, and I'm gonna change that color as well just so that we can see what we're doing. Now we want to take that rectangle and position it horizontally centered over the oval like that. And then what you want to do is click and hold Alt as you drag away and that'll create another square of the exact same type. And what we're going to do is align that left edge with the center of the oval right there. Now all we need to do is just grab our oval and hold the Alt key and drag in and that'll just scale it in like so. We're going to select our two rectangles and we're going to blend them together. And to do this, we're going to use the Pathfinder tool. Now, if you don't have this in your sidebar here, go up to Window and then make sure that Pathfinder is checked. And we're going to use the first shape mode and that's just going to unite the two shapes and kind of blend them into one. And then lastly, just hold Shift and click on the oval and we're going to select the minus front and that's just going to kind of crop that little shape at the bottom left. Now we're just gonna drag this up to the bottom right of our iMessage and align that. And we're gonna rotate this in a little bit. Then just select I and click on your iMessage and we've got that blue bubble. Now I know this isn't an exact replica of what the iMessage bubble looks like, but this will get us most of the way there. You can spend as much time as you want tweaking this, changing colors. The last thing we're gonna do is just select both shapes and make sure that we blend them into one and then just select it and hit A on your keyboard, and that's gonna allow you to round any of the edges if you want, but specifically I'm gonna round this little bottom right edge so it's not as harsh. So this is the layer we're gonna use for all the messages being sent, but we need a white version of this for all the messages being received. So what we're gonna do is just create a new layer. We're gonna select that blue text bubble, select the new layer, and then hit Command Shift V, and what that's gonna do is actually paste it in place. So if I uncheck the last layer, you'll see we have the exact same thing. Then just select that object, go to the object menu in the top, and we're gonna reverse this by going to transform, reflect, make sure you have vertical enabled and 90 degrees, and that's just gonna flip it horizontally. And then just hit I on your keyboard and select the white background. And now we've got a white version as well as a blue version. Then just make sure you've saved it. We'll call this text bubble and I'll say two since I already have a few of these out there and hit okay. Now we can head over into After Effects and create a new composition. These are the settings I'm using, just 1080p, 2997. And for the purpose of this video, the animation will be 10 seconds, but if you need it to be longer, you can adjust it there. So we're just gonna call this master and hit okay. And then we're gonna double click in this gray space in our project window, and that's gonna let us import any file. So we're gonna select text bubble two, but before we hit open, make sure that you select import as and choose retain layer sizes. Now the reason we do that is because when we open up that comp, 
we want each layer's size to just be the size of that object, not just a full 1920 by 1080 canvas. Now we're not actually gonna do anything with this composition, but we will be using the layers from here. So if you wanna organize this by throwing it into an assets folder, you can do that just to stay organized. But we're gonna create another composition and call this sender one and hit okay. And this is gonna be the first blue text that we send. So what we can do is go back into our text bubble comp, select layer one, copy and paste it in to our sender one comp. And now we can begin animating it. Now the first thing we wanna do is add a mask. And the quickest way to do this is to select the layer and then just double click on the rectangle tool and that'll just size the mask to the size of the object so you don't have to sit there and drag out a square. Next, we wanna to toggle down that mask and we're gonna jump in about a second into our timeline and hit the stopwatch on the mask path and that's gonna set a keyframe. We'll jump to the beginning. And then you wanna actually select the mask in the display window and we're gonna drag this down until you can't see the bubble anymore. So that looks good and if we play this back, you'll see that it just animates up. So not too interesting, but what we also wanna do is scale it up as that's happening. So just select your layer and hit S on the keyboard. That'll bring up your scale properties and we can hit the stopwatch again come back to the beginning and select 0%. Now we have it scaling up as we have the mask revealing it. Now you guys know that the first thing we wanna do to make this animation a little bit cooler is to set all these keyframes to easy ease. That'll just make everything a little bit smoother. And the way you can do that is select your layer and select you on the keyboard. That'll bring up all of your animated properties. You can select all of those, right click on one of them, Go down to this other menu under Keyframe Assistant and then select Easy Ease. Now there's not gonna be much that has changed when we play it back, but the biggest place this helps us is in the Graph Editor. Now just before we do anything else, we wanna select the last scale keyframe and copy it. Then just go about five or 10 frames in later into the timeline and hit Command V and that's gonna paste the exact same keyframe. Then come back to that second to last keyframe and just scale it up a little bit past what you need. So if we need it to be at 100%, let's just bring it up to 105%. So it kind of pops up and then settles back in. Now let's select all of our scale keyframes and go to our graph editor at the top right. And what we wanna do is just select the bottom left keyframe and we wanna click and drag this handlebar here at the bottom while holding shift so it doesn't change any of the properties. Then just come up to the top and we're gonna click and drag that all the way to the left. And so if we play this back, you'll see it kind of pops up and then settles in. Now because of the way that we have this kind of popping up, the animation actually gets to close to 100% before we even hit our keyframe. So one way that we can make this a little bit smoother is just dragging our mask path back to where we're pretty much at 100%. So if we play that back, you'll see that it's just a little bit smoother. Next, let's go ahead and add our text. So we're gonna select our text tool at the top and we're just gonna drag a text box out here. And then you can just type in whatever your message is and you wanna center that anchor point and then we're gonna align it perfectly to the center of the composition. Now, obviously we have a ton of extra space around our text because we only have a few words, but if you're using something like four or five lines, then that would be helpful. But because we only have a couple words, we wanna scale down that bubble. The way we're gonna do this is instead of coming into the text bubble itself and scaling that down, we're actually gonna pre-compose this by right-clicking and selecting pre-compose, and you can just call this bubble one or whatever you wanna do. That way we can actually go into this bubble one comp and scale this down to say like 75%, but we can also uncheck constrained proportions so that we can scale down the height without affecting the width. So if we jump back to sender one, that's looking a lot better. Now you can tweak this as much as you want. So if you need a little bit more height, a little bit less width and say that looks good, then you can just tweak that as needed. Now the last thing we wanna do is just animate up the text because right now we just have the bubble animating up but nothing's happening to the text. Now the way we're gonna animate this is drop down our text, go to the animate menu and we're just gonna select line spacing. 
Then where it says add in the same row as animator one, you wanna select property and then go to scale. Now drop down the range selector and then also drop down advanced. And we're gonna change just a couple things here. First of all, we're gonna to go to the beginning of our comp and hit the keyframe on start and then go about two seconds in and drag this up to 100. Then you wanna change based on to word, so it only animates each word at a time and not each letter. And then go down to scale and set that to zero. Now if we watch this back, you'll see that the text is animating up. Now you can just select the text and select U on the keyboard, so we just have what's being animated. And we're gonna just drag in the first keyframe to about 10 or 20 frames in, and then drag in the second one so that the whole animation only lasts about 20 or 30 frames. We're gonna easy ease both of those, go into our graph editor. We're gonna select the top keyframe and drag the handle all the way to the left. And we'll play it back and you'll see that everything is being animated. Now that we set up the first blue text, we need to go through and set up the white bubble. Now the process for doing this is the exact same, so I'm not gonna show you how to do that, and I'll just speed through this really quickly. So once you have set up your white bubble, then all you have to do is just put the two texts together. So we're gonna jump into our master composition now, and we're gonna drag in receiver and sender one. And if you wanna throw in a background here, you can. I have this free stock footage clip of someone typing on a keyboard, so it just kind of adds to the effect. And if you are using a background clip like this, I would recommend just creating some sort of background layer to darken it up a little bit. So you take a black shape layer, for example, put it on top of your video clip and bring the opacity down to say 35. If you wanna animate that in so it's a little more smooth, you can set a keyframe at 35, go to the beginning and set zero so that it fades in and then your text starts. Now obviously these two texts are animating on top of each other, which isn't super helpful. So we're gonna head over into our sender one composition, hit command K, and we're just gonna half this width by clicking into the width, putting a forward slash and then putting in two, and that'll just divide it in half for us. And just to make sure everything's aligned, we'll select both of these and click and drag while holding shift so that the blue bubble is aligned with the edge of the screen. We'll go into the receiver comp, do the same thing, and make sure it's aligned to the left side. Now when we go back into our master comp, you'll see that yes, they are still overlapping, but they're actually perfectly aligned in the middle and to the edge of each of their comps. So because we have this background fading, we want to start both of our texts after that happens. So we'll drag them in just a couple frames. And obviously we want our sender text to open up first. So we'll drag our receiver about a second or two later. So we'll have the background fade, the first text shelf should fade up, and then we'll have the second text fade up. Now what we wanna do is have this text land and then push up, and as it's being pushed up, we'll have that next text come in under it. So what we wanna do is go to the last frame where the animation is finished. For me, that's about a second and 20 frames. We'll select the sender comp, hit P on our keyboard, and select the stopwatch to select the keyframe and we'll go about a full 20 or 30 frames forward. And we're just gonna move that comp up a couple of pixels. I'll move it about two, 250 up. We're gonna have this super quick at the beginning and then kind of settle into it. So just move that right handlebar and you'll see that it kind of settles into itself. And we want that second text to come in just about halfway through as that's happening. So if we play it back, that second text will come in. And then if we were to add more text, you could select both of those compositions and hit P on the keyboard, set a keyframe, and then go another 20 frames or so, and then move both of those up to reveal the next text. So if we play the full thing back now, we'll have our background dim, the first text will animate, and then the second text will come in and they'll both move up. So guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope that helped you, and I hope you got a bit more of an understanding of how to use After Effects. Again, just a reminder that that Mac Basics course is available on sale for the holiday season, so be sure to check that out. Again, I know it's not for you guys, I know it's more for your parents, but I think this would be an awesome holiday gift. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.